Good evening. I'm Pastor Alex Post, and you're watching and listening to our service of Vespers for the Feast of the Annunciation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For Lent midweek services, we have been looking at our Lord Jesus' work of creation and new creation. We are taking a bit of a joyful break from that tonight for the fourth Lent midweek service. As you can see, we have the white pyramids up for a feast day. Again, it is the Annunciation of our Lord on March 25th. Today is exactly nine months before Christmas Day, when we give thanks for Jesus' birth. The Feast of Jesus' Annunciation, then, we celebrate his conception and the announcement of the angel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary nine months earlier. If you have your hymnal Lutheran service book at home, please take it out and prepare to follow along. If you don't have a hymnal and would like one, please consider ordering one for your home from Concordia Publishing House. And if that's not a possibility, please contact me or the church and we'll be happy to get you a copy for your home and for your family. The order of service is Vespers for this evening on page 229. We'll sing the Lent response at the bottom of that page and we'll sing the Lent responsory after the readings on page 231. We also have the joy during the service of Vespers of singing the Magnificat. It says there, it's the song of Mary. This is what Mary sang right after the angel announced the birth of her son Jesus and his conception. When she visited Elizabeth, she sang this Magnificat. So it's very special that we're singing that tonight as part of Vespers. When we get to the Psalm on page 230, you'll please scroll down beneath your video a little bit and the psalm is there with all the text for you to follow along. We'll speak the intro it for tonight together. It's from Isaiah 62, verse 11b, that's the antiphon, and the body of the intro it is from Psalm 34, verses one through three. In our prayers tonight, we will pray for Chad Little, one of our members who has chronic health problems and has requested our prayers that God would grant him help and healing. We'll also pray for all of our members as we are stuck inside for the most part and unable to gather together as the body of Christ. We pray that those who are discouraged may find hope in our Lord Jesus. And we'll pray for all people in all nations, for our leaders, for healthcare providers, and for daily bread during this time, and according to God's will for healing and for an end to the COVID-19 plague, that God would keep us steadfast in his word. The Order of Vespers now on page 229. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Please scroll down now and we'll speak together the intro it for the Annunciation of our Lord. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The office hymn for the Annunciation of our Lord Jesus is number 356, The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came.
The Old Testament reading for the Annunciation of our Lord is from Isaiah, the seventh chapter. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 10. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you take no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, dear brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ our Lord. Today is a wonderful day. Today is a glorious day. Today is a holy feast and it's a celebration of the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's called the Annunciation of our Lord. That word Annunciation means announcement. And today is March 25th, which is exactly nine months before December 25th, Christmas Day. Today we give thanks to God that he kept all his promises to his Old Testament people, and he also keeps all his promises to us. On this day, the angel Gabriel came down from heaven and announced to a poor, young, engaged woman named Mary that she would have a son. And not just any son, this son is the son of God, true God, becoming true man in her womb without the contribution of a human father. There really is no greater miracle, and there really is no greater reason to rejoice. The angel Gabriel greeted Mary. He said, greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. That is the theme and the content of all our teaching and preaching in the Holy Christian Church, and particularly on this day, and especially during this message, the Lord is with you. It's a message that we need now more than ever. We can't be with each other, at least not in big groups, not face to face, not for now. But the Lord is with you. He has promised always to be with you, even to the end of the age. That's the last thing he promised you before he ascended back into heaven to his Father's right hand where he rules over all things for you. And he's still true God, and he is still truly a man. I think that of all the holidays, even birthdays, and also anniversaries and graduations and all the special days that we celebrate yearly, Christmas, gets the most attention. The lights, the music, the gifts, the worship, and the family time, almost everyone gets the day off. It is a very big deal, and rightly so. We will celebrate Christmas with all its joy every year that we are here on earth until our dear Lord Jesus returns. But I also think that the Annunciation of our Lord deserves at least as much rejoicing, if not more, than Christmas Day. Now, before you condemn me for heresy, hear me out. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, John tells us in his Gospel, chapter 1, verse 14. Yes, he did become flesh and dwell among us. When exactly did the Word, the eternal Son of God, descend from heaven and become flesh? And how was it that he dwelt among us? Well, it had already happened before Christmas Day. In fact, it had already happened around nine months earlier. This is when human life begins, at the moment of conception, not at implantation, when the beautiful and secret mystery of the union of one cell from the husband and one from the wife implants in the uterus, but actually at fertilization, when the two cells become one living, unique human individual created by God and knit together with care in his or her mother's womb. That's when your life began. That is also when the earthly life of Jesus Christ our Lord began. It's incredible. It's a miracle. Let me give you a comparison now. I am still amazed that a tiny seed, which looks dead, and you can keep it in a packet for months and years and it's just sitting there. But when you plant it in good soil and the rain waters it and the sun enriches it, suddenly one day a tiny little green plant bursts forth and what seemed dead is suddenly alive. Its own beautiful, unique growing organism, another gift and creation from our Father, our Creator. We got to see this a few weeks ago when the Sunday school children planted little pepper seeds in the soil and they put it in the cup. For days we gave it a little water and we put it in the windowsill to get some sun, but nothing. And then one day 
Suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, a little green stem with a tiny green leaf on top poked out. Isn't that incredible? I dare you never to lose your sense of wonder and joy at God's good creation. You know what's even better, far better, than a nice little green plant which might feed you or provide beauty? A baby is better. Human babies. We love them. God loves them. He creates them. He gives them to their parents. He blesses the world through them. Babies are blessings. Now, you know very well that not everyone in the world thinks that babies are blessings. Actually, no one hates babies more than the devil. The devil was at work already in the beginning through the first son born to a woman. That son's name was Cain. His father Adam and his mother Eve hoped and thought that he would bring joy and blessing to their family, but instead Cain ended up murdering his brother Abel. Many years later, the devil also worked through Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to murder the babies of Israel so that the enslaved children of Israel wouldn't become too many and rise up. Once again, many years after that, the devil worked through King Herod to murder the tiny little baby boys of Bethlehem so that he could snuff out the tiny infant son of God before he could die and rise from the dead to take away our sins. The devil can't stand babies. Babies remind the devil of Jesus. Now the devil still works today, for he is a liar and a murderer from the beginning, as we will hear Jesus say in the gospel reading for this coming Sunday morning. The devil teaches today the false doctrine of separating marital union and sexual pleasure from procreation, God's gift of babies, which he gives through that union of husband and wife. It is a doctrine of the devil that we are free and fully funded to abort little babies, over 60 million of them just in our country during the last 47 years. But our God is not a liar. He is the truth. And our God is not a murderer. He gives life. God saw all of the sin and wretchedness that Adam and Eve brought into the world, and he knows that every one of us since has also been conceived and born in sin. God did not sit back and watch and let all this happen without coming to us and saving us and helping us. The Lord is with you. He promised Adam and Eve in the beginning, right then and there, before they even left the Garden of Eden, that he would send an offspring of Eve to bruise the head of the wicked serpent. Jesus Christ is that offspring. Many years later, God promised Abraham that through his offspring, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. The Lord is with you. Jesus is that offspring as well. Then Abraham's great-grandson named Judah, he received a promise that the scepter would never depart from his clan. Once again, Jesus Christ bears that royal scepter, and he was born as a member of the tribe of Judah. The Lord is with you. Many years after that, God promised King David that one of his sons would sit on his throne forever. And as you know, Jesus is that son of David, that eternal king of kings. The Lord is with you. Then one day, during very unlikely circumstances, God promised to a king named Ahaz that a virgin would conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. You know that God's name Emmanuel means God with us. The Lord is with you. Jesus is that son. Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus was conceived and born to the Virgin Mary. Isaiah prophesied this like 735 years before Christ was conceived. And just as God promised, after a lot of waiting, it happened. The Lord is with you. So it is that one day, about six months after Zechariah and Elizabeth had miraculously conceived with John the Baptist in their old age, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth. Keep in mind that Gabriel, the angel, did not go to Jerusalem, the capital city. 
He did not appear to the Roman Emperor Caesar or to the governor or to King Herod. Gabriel didn't go to Judea in the south. He went up north to Galilee, the despised area, and he went to a tiny little town called Nazareth. That town isn't even mentioned in the Old Testament. And he appeared to a young, frightened, engaged woman named Mary. And he called her, O favored one. And he said, the Lord is with you. And he promised that she, of all people, would conceive in her womb and bear a son. And Gabriel even solved that problem of trying to figure out what to name your baby. He said, you'll call his name Jesus. The Greek name Jesus is the same as the Hebrew name Yeshua or Joshua. And that name literally means the Lord saves. And so it is that in the Gospel of Luke, immediately after the narrative of the Christmas story with the shepherds and the angels and baby Jesus in the manger, when he was just eight days old and they circumcised him, they officially named him on that day Jesus because Luke says that's the name that Gabriel had given him before he was conceived in the womb. Dear Christians, human life begins at conception. And the human life of the eternal Son of God, Jesus Christ, began when the angel Gabriel announced it to Mary. This is why we rejoice and give thanks today. God became one of us. And then nine months later, Mary and Joseph would rejoice and give thanks to God for the safe delivery of that little eight pounds, six ounce, or however big he was, baby Jesus. The omnipotent God of the universe became weak, little, and wrapped in swaddling clothes and placed in the feeding trough for animals. But nine months before that, the same little baby had been a two-celled embryo growing every day in the mysterious safety of the womb of his virgin mother Mary. That is the miracle of Jesus' incarnation. The reason that Jesus did all of this is so that he could become the sacrifice for our sins. Justice requires payment, and Jesus paid. Adam and Eve brought sin into the world. Jesus brought life and immortality to a dying world to be received by faith for eternal life. Abraham's son Isaac was spared, and a ram was sacrificed in his place on the altar as a substitute. But our Father in heaven did not spare his only begotten Son, whom he loves, but he gave him up as the ransom for all of us. You might also remember that King David's first son died, and that was because of David's coveting, lusting, and lying, and adultery, and murder. But Jesus Christ, God our Father's Son, died not because of any sins he did, for he never sinned, but because of our sins, our gossiping, our lying and cheating and stealing, our aborting and our anger and our disobedience, our idolatry, blasphemy, and despising God's word. Jesus took every one of our sins into his body so that when he suffered and died and was buried, our sin died with him. The Lord is with you. How do you know? We may not always feel it. We sometimes doubt. We get anxious. We look at things falling around us and we wonder, is God with us? Is the Lord with me? Trust the Lord. Believe in his word. Hear again what the angel Gabriel came down from heaven to say to Mary. He said, the Lord is with you. And he said, nothing will be impossible with God. And then you and I can respond like Mary, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Dear saints in Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Lord is with you. Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day, on Easter Sunday, to bring life and immortality to you and to all who are baptized and believe in him. Jesus is no longer a tiny two-celled embryo and he did not remain a cute little eight pounds, six ounce baby, cooing and then later crawling and crying for food and growing into a young man. But Jesus Christ, the God of the universe, the eternal word of God and the Father's only begotten Son, he is still a man, a man with hair and flesh and bones, with fingers and feet and eyes and teeth, 
Jesus Christ is at God's right hand, reigning over all creation for our good, for your good. The Lord is with you. And yet he isn't just with you because he's everywhere. He is God, and so of course he is and can be anywhere at any time because he is God. But he is with you specifically and concretely at places and times where he can be found for your benefit, where he's promised to be. He calls and he gathers us together as his church, and he wants us to meet together whenever possible. When it's not possible, the Lord is still with us. He wants us to encourage each other however we can with his word. Jesus promises that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there with us. Jesus promises that he makes disciples of all nations by baptizing and teaching us. The Lord is with you. Jesus promises that he dwells among us today, no longer in his mother Mary's womb, but in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, so that whoever eats and drinks the body and blood of Christ with faith receives forgiveness and life and salvation. The Lord is with you. The Lord is also with you whenever you speak or read or hear his word, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. Remain in his word. Read it out loud and quietly. Read it by yourself and with others. Read it at home and at church. For the same Lord Jesus Christ, who was conceived in Mary's womb and born nine months later on Christmas Day, promises that when you hear his word, you are hearing him. So tonight, if you have your hymnal, please turn with me to the creeds. If you'll turn with me to page 191 to find the Nicene Creed. We confess this every Sunday morning when we have the sacrament. We say these things out loud very often, and I want you to think about what we've heard here tonight whenever we confess the creed. So there on page 191, the second article is the longest, and right in the middle of the second article, we confess that we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, and we confess that he's true God. Now right in the middle it says who, that's Christ, for us men, that's for mankind, for all people, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. That already happened before Christmas Day. Jesus was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and made man nine months earlier. On this day, the day we celebrate today, the Annunciation of our Lord at his conception. Now turn the page. On page 192, we see the Apostles' Creed. This is your daily creed. It's the one you confess in your daily devotions. It's the one you heard at your baptism, and you learn it in your catechism, and they will confess it also at your funeral. The second article of this shorter Apostles' Creed says, and I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. That first line, conceived by the Holy Spirit, that's the annunciation and conception of Jesus. And then, born of the Virgin Mary, that's Christmas, nine months later. We also confess these things on page 320. We only confess the Athanasian Creed once a year, but we confess there on page 320, at the end of this creed, that Jesus is one Christ, and we say that it's not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of humanity into God. That is Jesus' conception, his glorious annunciation. So we give thanks today, and in our creeds, in our songs, in our prayers, and in the preaching, that the Lord is with us. He did all this for us and for our salvation. And finally then, how should we view the mother of our Lord, Mary? She is a humble servant of God. She said to the angel, let it be to me according to your word. She believed in God's word, and because of that faith, she believed in what was not seen. She was full of grace, not as one who gives out or dispenses grace to us, but as the one whom God filled with grace. Mary is the mother of God. She's the one who carried Jesus for nine months in her womb until his birth. 
Mary raised Jesus. Mary saw Jesus die, and she saw him rise from the dead. And she was there when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to his brothers and sisters 50 days later on Pentecost. Now, we shouldn't pray to Mary or ask for her intercession, for she is with her son in heaven now, and we have no command or promise in all of the scriptures that we should ask her or any of the saints in heaven to pray for us. The Bible also says nothing about Mary having an immaculate conception without sin, nor does it ever mention her being bodily assumed into heaven at the end of her life. That being said, we should highly regard and give thanks to God for St. Mary. We give thanks that God favored Mary without any grace or merit in her. The Lord was with her, and the Lord is also with you. He loves you. He forgives you all your sins. He is with you always, even to the end of the age. So, dear saints in Christ, blessed feast of the Annunciation of our Lord Jesus Christ to all of you. In just a few moments, we will sing Mary's song, the Magnificat, and we will magnify Jesus, not Mary, not ourselves, but God himself, the eternal word of God who took on human flesh, the son of David who reigns forever and who saves his people. The Lord is with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. My soul full magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he of his handmaiden, for he pulled from this name, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty One has done great things to me, and holy is his name. to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of the angel to the Virgin Mary, so by the message of his cross and passion, bring us to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great physician of our bodies and souls. We pray at this time for your help and healing, that you would, according to your good and gracious will, end the plague of COVID-19 and bring healing and help to all who are affected by it. We pray for all our members that you would give them courage and hope in the days to come. We pray for the people of every nation and for the leaders of the nations, that you would give them wisdom to make difficult decisions, and that you would bless all healthcare providers and everyone who provides for our daily bread. We pray that you would keep us all steadfast in your word, be with all who have requested our prayers, especially Chad, and bring us at last to our heavenly home. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.